So we've heard about like, all the benefits of, of keto and there are tons. Um, so what's the best way to get started for some people? Like, you know, just like first steps, they're getting into it. What's the right way to get started with keto in your opinion? Yeah, that's a great question because there's a lot of wrong ways to right. do it. All right. Benazadi, welcome to the show, brother. Will, I'm so excited to be here, brother. Yeah, man. I'm so happy you're here, dude. Um, we got a lot to talk about. We've known each other for a long time, man. All right. We've gone way back since our middle school days. Um, so what has it been now? It's over... 10, 15 years. Yeah, almost cra- 20. Cra- we, we, used to, we used to watch wrestling and then yeah. we used to actual wrest- yeah. wrestle in your <laughs> yeah, old sure. house. Yeah, totally. We go way back. <laughs> way back, dude. Way back. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. We got a lot to talk about. I mean, you've been w- making waves, brother. You've been doing amazing things. I've, I've been super inspired by all the things you've been working on um, and your journey into health and wellness and you know, opening up your business and now what you're doing with Keto Camp and uh, really excited to kind of dive deep into all these different topics. And then we'll talk a little bit maybe about the entrepreneurial journey into all those different aspects and how it all ties in together. Um, but I think a, a good place to start is the start, right? Like how this whole thing happened for you. Like I know a little bit about your background, right? Because we've been friends for so long. Um, but tell tell the audience and whoever's listening, watching uh, your background, your journey and how you know, that led you into the health and wellness space and where you are now. Yeah, you know some of the journey and some of my story. And uh, it goes back to when I was a kid and I was, I had parents who immigrated here from Iran in the 1970s and they were doing the best they could. My mom was a assistant manager at Kentucky Fried Chicken and my, my dad, they were divorced. So I was pretty much left to my own devices growing up and I hung around with the wrong crowd. Not you, you were part of the good crowd. (laughs) But anyways, that led me to a very unhealthy lifestyle of bad eating, um, bad habits, which included drugs and alcohol and and addictions to video games. And that really transpired into the way I felt and the way I looked. So I was obese, overweight and obese, both physically and mentally for most of my life. And it wasn't until I hit rock bottom at the age of 24 back in 2008 that I finally woke up because... Up until that point, 2008, uh, I tell people I was tiptoeing my way through life, just hoping to make it safely to death. Mm. Uh, I was not, I did not create an original thought. I was just going through the motions. I had a hole, a void that I was filling with drugs, alcohol, video games, Mm. and I was not living on purpose with my purpose. And I had to hit this rock bottom for me to wake up. And everybody's rock bottom is different if you've ever been through rock bottom. For me, it was my ex-girlfriend who I was to get, we were together for four years. She broke up with me because the relationship was going nowhere. Mm-hmm. I was working as, as a packing and shipping manager and I was just playing video games all yeah. the time, dude. And she broke up with me and I was so miserable to the point where I did not want to even, even be in a room by myself because every time I was, I would think about ways to kill myself. I would actually wow. go on Google and look for ways to kill myself wow. because I was just tired of hurting. I was just crying every day. So I would surround myself with friends so I didn't have to think those thoughts. And every time I went to go on Dr. Google to look for ways to kill myself, I would think about my mother and what I would leave behind mm. for her. And it just stopped me from pursuing that. So I knew that I had to do something about this because I was tired of being hurt and I was not going to take my life. And what happened at that point in my life was what, what we see here with books. Books entered my life. Mm. At this point, I had never read only from school when I was forced to read. Right. I mean, we were in the same, you know, that same phase of our lives, which is video games and media and all that stuff. Right. ADD driven society. Exactly. Totally involved with that. But at this point, I needed I needed something in my life. And I started reading books from Wayne Dyer and Bob Proctor Mm. and these incredible authors that I had never knew existed. And it totally opened up a, a whole new world to me. And I realized I came to the realization that. I am actually responsible for for my life. I am responsible for being obese. I was 250 pounds at this point in my life. And like I said, not just physically, I was mentally obese. The way I would speak to myself, if I would say those words to my to you or to another friend, you would slap me across the, the face because yeah. they were just self-destructive thoughts. So at this point in my life, the books helped me realize this. And if somebody's in rock bottom right now, or if they ever go rock bottom, this is an important message right here. I know that I was put in the dirt, not because I was being buried, but because I was planted. And at that point, I bloomed. And from that point on, fast forward nine months, I lost 80 pounds. I went from 250 pounds to 170. I went from 34% body fat to 6% body fat. But forget about all that. I carved out what I call a mental six pack. And I think that's more important 
and a physical six pack any day of the week. So that's where it all started for me back Amazing. in 2008, 2009. And we could, we could go from there. Incredible brother. So it was just like the, that, that turning point in your life, the mindset just snapped. You got into reading, you started getting motivated. And I mean, what'd you say it was a, a quick period of time and you got to the single digit body yeah, fat. Nine months. Crazy bro. Yeah. That, that's incredible. So, so you're, you're, you've turned your life around super, super inspiring. And then that led you down to, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, right. And launching your businesses. And, and now we are to the point where you've launched an incredible brand keto camp, right? Can, can you tell us a little bit about keto camp and, and why it was created and a little bit about that, that company? Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Keto camp is, is my company and our yeah. mission is to educate and inspire 1 billion people on planet earth. Cause let's face it. We look out there. There's a lot of people who are sick. A lot mm -hmm. of people that are overweight. A person dies from diabetes every 10 seconds. Wow. Right? Since we've been on this podcast, there have been numerous people who have died. 150,000 people die every single day. We have an epidemic of disease. We have an epidemic of people who are overweight. And the thing about it, Will, is that it's unnecessary. These are all inflicted upon us. And if we look into the conventional medicine, the conventional medical box, mm -hmm. it's not going to get us the, the, the results that we want. And I've, I've experimented with that. I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand with my father. So I'm on a mission to cut through all of that noise. When you go on, like I mentioned, Dr. Google, and yeah. you look for what's the healthiest diet, you're just going to be so conflicted. Dr. Google's the worst. The worst. The worst it, yeah. could, it could be helpful, but you got to yeah. know what you're looking for. For sure. But if sure. you're just somebody who's just looking on there, it's the worst. Like, like you yep. said, you're just going to be paralyzed and you're not going to know what to do. Right. So here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to cut through all that noise, let you know what's worked for us. And we don't want everybody to just believe us. We want you to have the faith to try it out. And we've seen just amazing transformations. And that's our mission to educate and inspire. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm super inspired by, by the way you put out content, the way you talk to your community and how you brand your company and how you serve your, your customers and clients. I mean, you're, you're grinding, man, all the time, putting out fresh content. And you could tell, you could tell when people are, are forcing it or when it's genuine. And I could tell with you, all the content you put out is super genuine. Like whenever you pull out your phone and you're talking to your, your Instagram followers or your clients, I feel like you're talking to friends, you know, it doesn't feel like, Oh, here, I gotta, I gotta do some content because I haven't been doing content lately. No, you're like, let me talk to my friends real quick. Let me give them a quick update. And I, I just think that's awesome. You know, you could sense the passion coming through the camera. Thank you. I love it. And I've learned a lot from you. So you're a big part of that, dude. So thank you. Oh, thank you, brother. I mean, this, this podcast was, was somewhat inspired by you. I mean, I'm seeing you on the grind with your podcast, the keto camp podcast plug, check out the keto camp podcast, please. Awesome. Awesome show. Um, but keto, I mean, obviously the keto diet that's centered around keto camp, right. And you're teaching people how to, uh, to, to do the keto diet effectively. I mean, keto is like a really, really hot trend these days, right? There's so many people I know personally in my own social circle that are on the keto diet. I've tried it, you know, you know, for a few months I was on it. I was off of it. You know, I, I enjoy the way I feel when I'm on it. That's for sure. Um, but let's, let's tell the people that aren't so familiar with the keto diet. What are the biggest benefits of the keto diet? You're obviously a huge believer in the keto diet. So, so what are some of these biggest benefits and, and why are you such a proponent? Yes. Great question. Cause there's a, it is trending right now. Right. And I, I want your listeners to understand that although it's one of the top search terms on the internet, actually, what is the keto diet was the number one oh, really? health search term, 183 million results. Wow. Crazy. In 2018 and now 2019. Wow. But the thing about keto is that it's not technically a diet. It's mm. a, it's a metabolic state and ketosis, which is the ketogenesis, which is the birth of ketones. And I'll explain what that means has mm. been around since the dawn of humankind. Mm. So it's been around forever, but now it's starting to become popular because a lot of people are getting uh, transformations from it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of ways to do keto. There's no cookie cutter approach to it. So you have these companies that are now co-opted into to having these keto products, but it's not necessarily healthy keto. So there's a big difference. And I want your listeners to, right. I mean, you see companies being branding everything keto. Like I, I sent you a picture of that smoothie King the other yes. day and they're like keto smoothies is like yes. a big part of their menu. You know, exactly. Everybody's it's, trying to ride the wave. Yeah. Chipotle, there's yeah. keto bowl. So everybody's yeah. riding that wave and mm -hmm. it's, and it's cool because people are now hearing about keto, mm -hmm. but also they're doing keto and it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get the results they want because right. it could be dirty keto. Dirty keto. Yeah. We so talk about what dirty keto is. Yeah, totally. We, yeah. Could, we could talk about yeah. that. So first I want to explain yeah. what goes on in the body for it to be categorized as a state of ketosis. Because sure. sometimes people hear ketosis and they think of something else called ketoacidosis, 
which is completely separate. Ketoacidosis is only a concern for type 1 diabetics where they have extremely high levels of ketones mm -hmm. and it's very damaging to the body. But if you're not type 1 diabetic, then we're not talking about, it's not relevant to you. So mm -hmm. keto is a metabolic state where when you bring your carbohydrates low enough, your body needs to get to its fuel source from somewhere. So it starts, it sends a signal to the liver and it starts breaking down fat and then your liver produces ketones. Ketones actually fuel the brain three times more efficiently than glucose. So you have more brain power. You get to lose some extra body weight if that's your goal. And not only that, you really downregulate inflammation. There's a lot of studies that show it turns on these genes that activate longevity genes. Amazing. So it helps with inflammation, it'll help you live longer, and it'll help with weight loss if that's your goal. Mm -hmm. But that's if you do it the right way, which I'll get into healthy keto yep. versus unhealthy keto. The dirty keto. The dirty keto, right. yeah, <laughs> clean versus dirty. Nice. Uh, well, first of all, if we look back at when we were babies, and if, if you were breastfed, if your kids were breastfed, mm -hmm they were actually in a state of ketosis. That's it. They were initially, naturally, were born into ketosis. Yes. Crazy. We're born into ketosis because breast milk has saturated fat, it has cholesterol. Mm. So burning fat is our birth, right? Mm. But then what happens is, like for myself, I was weaned off of the breast milk and then I was fed uh, uh, snacks yeah. and high sugary sure. formulas every two to three hours. And then I taught my body to be a sugar burner. Right. So the goal with keto is to teach your body to go back to its natural fat burning state so you don't have to rely on eating every two to three hours and snacking and raising glucose. Because I tell people all the time when I give lectures, if you want to age faster than anybody you know, eat every two to three hours, you'll definitely do that. Because mm. every Just time- like snacking and things yeah, like that. Yeah, even if it's the healthiest snack mm. because you're raising glucose and insulin, you're teaching your body to be in a fed state and your body has to process that. So you're going to like this analogy because you have a Tesla. I compare burning sugar mm -hmm. to a Mack truck that's mm -hmm. speeding through the highway. Let's say I-95 here. It has all this smoke coming out of its exhaust pipe and it's probably not going to get to its destination right. safe. So when your cells that you're made up of burning are burning sugar, it's like that Mack truck. When you switch to a healthy keto diet, it's like this Tesla cruising through the highway. It's cleaner for the environment. And let's face it, it's a, it's a beautiful looking vehicle. <laughs> so we wanna teach your listeners how to be a Tesla here instead of being a Mack truck. It's all about that clean energy, right? Clean energy. Amazing. Yes. So I can talk about dirty versus clean real quick. Yeah, please do. So, so dirty keto is people who are going to McDonald's and they're getting, or Arby's or whatever it is, and they're sure. getting burgers and just getting it without the bun and saying hashtag keto. Oh yeah, keto, that's yeah. it, just give me. <laughs> It's all preservatives it's and all, things like exactly. that. Yeah. Which might get you into ketosis, but it's not gonna get you the results you want. Ah, gotcha. Definitely not long-term. So we wanna avoid things like vegetable oils, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, sucralose, mm -hmm. Splenda. That's keto, but it's dirty keto. Instead, mm -hmm. we wanna switch over to avocado oil, uh, olive oil, coconut oil. Those are healthier oils, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, and, right. and monk fruit, and stevia. Those are better sweeteners. So those little swaps right there make a big difference for people. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, you know, getting into ketosis is this thing, right? That's everybody wants to achieve. I'm in a state of ketosis, right? How do you know if you're in a state of ketosis? How long does ketosis last? Do, I, I've seen you talk a lot about you do uh, kind of cycles, right? Yes. You do keto states for a few days and then you go off of it. I mean, you know, t tell us a little bit about that. How do you, how do you know you're in ketosis? I mean, you're probably at this point, you know, done it so often that, you know, you kind of feel when you're in ketosis, but somebody who's just getting into it, when do they know they've, they've reached that threshold and tell us a little bit about that cycle that you, you like to do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how do you know if you're in ketosis? If you, if you were going to test the most accurate ways to actually test your blood ketones. Okay. So there's a machine called keto mojo, which okay. I recommend you can get on Amazon. Mm. If you don't want to prick your finger to know, well, mm. if you did prick your finger, if you read, if it read 0.5 or higher, mm -hmm. you're in ketosis. So okay. that's, that's what you want to look for. But let's say you don't want to go that option. Or you don't care about pricking your finger. You could, test certain ways. So mm -hmm. you could skip a meal and see how you feel. If you skip, if you decide I'm going to skip lunch tomorrow and you actually feel better, you have more energy levels. That's probably a good thing. It, Did it, you brand that skip a meal? See how you feel? No, I Maybe didn't. You should, you I should brand been. that, right? <laughs> like so that's that. a good sign right there. <laughs> right, yeah. But if it's the opposite, yeah. if you're hangry, then yeah. you're probably not in ketosis. You still have some, some work to do. So that's a sign right there. You'll have more energy levels. You have more focus and you'll start losing some weight. That's how you'll know you're in ketosis. Okay, great. So we've heard about like, all the benefits of, of keto and there are tons. Um, so what's the best way to get started for some people? Like, you know, just like first steps, they're getting into it. What's the right way to get started with keto in your opinion? Yeah, that's a great question because there's a lot of wrong ways to right, do it. Right. So I would say the first thing to do is to start looking at what you're eating on a daily basis. Maybe mm -hmm. do a food diary for one day or two yep. days. Like a MyFitnessPal. Yeah, MyFitnessPal, right. Carb Manager is a good mm -hmm. app. Uh, and just stick to whatever you're doing right now just to get a good idea of how many carbs you're eating on a daily basis. Yep. And then what you want to do is 
start to decrease those carbohydrates as you increase your protein and fat, quality mm -hmm. protein, quality fat, and no snacking in between meals. You have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're eating more fat, more protein with your meals, less carbohydrates. Eventually, you wanna get it to the point where your carbohydrates are less than 50 grams per day. Mm. That should get you into ketosis. So you could take a week or two to get there, mm -hmm. but that's that's the the flow of it. Okay, awesome. And and, and tell us a little about these keto cycles that you you like to do, right? It's like a, it's like a keto sprint or yeah. How does it I work like exactly? Keto yeah, sprint. Yeah, yeah. That's good. I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> keto flexing is the keto way flexing. I, yeah. There you go. So what what it is is I love keto. I yep. think it's terrific. But I also know that there's not one culture in the history of this world that mm -hmm. ever stuck with the same right, diet right. long term. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, it's just it didn't happen. And when you stay in ketosis for too long. Mm -hmm. Some people are in it for years, negative things start to happen. So the way I teach it, it's kind of like the Pareto principle, right? 80-20, so 80, I would say 85% of the time, I'm in ketosis, and then the other time I'm getting out. I'm cycling out, I'm flexing out of ketosis mm -hmm. with high healthy carbs, but I, I do that once I've reached what I call metabolic flexibility. If somebody has insulin resistance, if they're really overweight, they'll stay in ketosis longer, so it depends on the person. But for me, 85% of the time I'm in ketosis, about 15% of the time I'm out. Nice, interesting. And this might sound like a dumb question. Um, you know, I got a buddy that is on the paleo diet, yeah. right? And uh, oftentimes when I'm like having him over and I'm like prepping food, I'm always like wondering like, what's the difference between keto and paleo? Can you explain real quick what the difference is? Because it's also a popular term these days, not as popular I think as keto, but I think it'd be great to hear the difference. I think a lot yeah. of people have that question, Yeah, it's right? a great question. Yeah. They are, there are some similarities there. And, yeah. and paleo was very popular, especially in the CrossFit world mm -hmm. for, for so many years. And it's still popular, but keto has kind of overtaken the, the, the paleo diet. Mm -hmm. So paleo is a little bit more carbohydrates. That's the difference. Oh, gotcha. So you're able to have some fruit, you're able to have more carbohydrates. So you probably won't get into ketosis with paleo, at least not most of the time, because mm -hmm. you're allowed more carbohydrates, but it's healthy mm -hmm. carbs. So right. that's the difference. Like sweet potatoes and stuff yeah, like that. Fruit, yeah, fruit, yeah. So kind of, I kind of do a cyclical version of that. Mm -hmm. So when I'm not in ketosis, I'm doing paleo. I'm mm -hmm. doing most of the time doing paleo. Oh, so, so it's more carbohydrates, that's the difference. Gotcha. Another thing that I know you're passionate about is intermittent fasting, yes. right? You know, when, when, when we used to train together, that was something that we practice all the time together. Yeah. I, I personally felt great whenever I was doing intermittent fasting. I find myself falling a little bit out of it lately because of schedules and my kids and things like that. And sometimes like I'm cooking them breakfast and you know, just they didn't eat their eggs. So I'm going to clean up the plate for them. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I've been trying to get back on it lately. Um, with, I know you're super passionate about it, right? And you have your book right there, the yeah. intermittent fasting cheat sheet, uh, which is available on Amazon, right? If people want to get it. Yeah. They can actually get the digital download for free over at uh, fastingcheatsheet.com. Awesome. And we'll drop links in the description to this. If you want to check out and get the, the booklet and the cheat sheet. Um, um, but let's talk about intermittent fasting, like, and, and why you're so passionate about it and the benefits. Yeah, it's, there's so many benefits to it. One mm -hmm. of the most important benefits is a, it's a concept called autophagy, which I want to get into real quick. But sure. before I do, intermittent fasting is not something you do technically. It's something you don't do. You just don't yeah. eat. Yeah. And it's really not about calories. It's not about restricting your calories or, or cutting your calories. I think that's a huge distraction. Mm -hmm. It's not eating less. It's eating less often. Mm -hmm. So you have an eating window and you have a fasting window, yeah. which is the way we were designed to be. If you look at the, the human body, 70 trillion cells are hardwired this way. Mm. We are, we're meant to be eating mm -hmm. and we're meant to be not eating, which mm -hmm. is fasting. So mm. if you follow this cycle, the body really rewards you for it. So I tell people, hey, if you wanna get started with fasting, let's find a good eating window for you, mm -hmm. which is typically 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Typically you're skipping breakfast, basically. Yeah, for most people that work, some people yeah. love their breakfast, they like to clean up their kids' eggs <laughs> so they could kind of flip it. But right. doing like a 16 hour fast, yep and an eight hour eating window is is a good way to do it after you start with keto. I think keto should be the prerequisite. Interesting, okay. Yeah, to teach your body. That's like to, the on-ramp to intermittent yes, fasting. Yes, exactly, it's the on-ramp. So that's the way I teach it. I have four pillars with, with what I teach. Adaptation, which is keto adaptation is yep. number one, and then fasting is number two. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, uh, following a 16, 18, a 16 hour fasting window, eight hour eating window, is a great sustainable approach that most people can do. And it, and it goes counter to what we've been taught our entire life, right? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It's been drilled into our heads, right? That we need to have a good breakfast that yeah. sets us up for the day. I, I remember you telling me that breakfast is actually one of the most dangerous meals of the day, yeah. right? Why, why do you believe that? Yeah, for many reasons. <laughs> breakfast is the most important meal of the, the day not to mess up. Right, okay. I think it's, yeah. the, it's the dumbest so it's meal So clarifi clarification, you could easily just screw up your entire day with breakfast. Oh, totally. Yeah. The, the problem is that 
Well, first of all, let's look at this from a, a historic viewpoint. Right. For millions of years, our ancestors did not crawl out of a cave and then have oh, they had oatmeal. To hunt. And yeah, exactly. They yep. had to hunt. They had to find their, their food. So we're hardwired this yep. way. We haven't evolved out of that. So the body's hardwired that mm. way. And if you look at the hunger hormone ghrelin, it's at its lowest point in the morning, which is the way that we are designed to be. So many people start their day with a carb loaded breakfast and all of a sudden their, their whole day is ruined because they're jacking up glucose and insulin. And if you're an entrepreneur, which most of your listeners are going to be, this is the worst way to start your day. Yeah, with a bagel and some orange juice, oh, right? Oh, totally. The worst. Not, not only that, because yeah. people think these whole grain cereals are healthy or even wheat bread. Right. Wheat, Gr granola. Granola. Yeah. But wheat bread, people think wheat bread's healthy. Wheat bread, two slices of wheat bread, spike your glucose and insulin as much as a 12 ounce can of Coke or a Snickers wow. bar. Okay, so crazy. when you do that, what happens when you spike glucose and insulin, it has to go back down. What goes back down with it is your energy levels. Then you have to go find your next meal and you're on this roller coaster. So right. it's not conducive to a productive day. It's very true. I feel like the days that I do eat breakfast, I'm hungrier for lunch quicker. Yes. Right? Exactly. Like I, I'm looking for the next meal. I'm looking for that quick spike again. Yes. Um, so yeah, so intermittent fasting. I mean, you rec you recommend this eating window. What is it usually like? It's um, it's eight, eight sixteen or sixteen eight. A sixteen eight, eight format. So mm -hmm. let's just say on paper on your schedule from twelve to eight p.m. Twelve mm -hmm. p.m. to eight p.m. That's your eating window, mm -hmm. and then you're fasting outside of that. Okay, interesting. And um, I think there are like like for example, I always got a little bit thrown off with intermittent fasting because I was training. Yes. Right. And I think some people are taught to eat before they train, right? To give them energy to get through the workout. And then some people are taught to eat right after they, they work out. W what's your school of thought on, on combining fasting with high intensity exercises and getting the most bang for your buck? What about people that want to build muscle and things like that? Yeah, you could do both. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's, it's important to get clear on the person's goals. Right. If they want to be a bodybuilder or they want to put as much size as possible in a short period of time, then it's probably not a good idea to do fasting during a workout. Right. But that's not synonymous with health and longevity. Right. So you've got to determine their goals. Right. Because if you look at the average bodybuilder, they live 12 years, they die 12 years faster oh, wow. than the average person because they're always in this growth phase, which mm. is called mTOR. It can be done. You, We've done it with you when we train, right? Right, right yeah. So what happens is the body raises these counter-regulatory hormones during a fast that preserves your muscle because mm -hmm. the body's not stupid. It's not going to store food as fat and then tap into its muscle when the chips are down. It's mm. like, that's like getting all this firewood ready for a cold winter month, mm. and then the winter rolls around, you have all this firewood, which is your body fat, and you start chopping up your couch. Mm. It makes no sense. So your body's gonna tap into its fat stores until you get to a freakishly low body fat of 5% or less, then it'll go into its muscle. So you have nothing to worry about. The, the body will preserve the muscle. So it's okay just to just hit your workouts with the, you know, while you're fasting and just, you know, take it through that eating window. And I think, I think it's, it should be a combination of both. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be every single time. Right. Maybe some days you have, you eat before, after some days you fast, but it has that variation. That's key. Okay. Interesting. All right. So we talked about some of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting, but you know, talk about some of the biggest myths of intermittent fasting. Cause there's a lot of information out there. You know, people are reading different stuff, different blogs, different videos right uh in your opinion what are some of these biggest myths yeah one of them was the muscle one for right, sure you're for not sure. going to lose your muscle because human growth hormone goes through the roof people feel that right they're like okay i'm not eating i'm not yeah. how am i going to keep up with things right exactly mm -hmm. exactly and i'm going to explain why it's it's all in the counter regulatory hormone so what exactly is that somebody hearing that what the heck is counter regulatory hormones these are hormones that go up when mm -hmm. insulin is down so insulin is down when you're not eating insulin mm -hmm. is that uh, fat storage hormone it's the only fat storage hormone we have when that's at baseline because you're not eating these counter regulatory go hormones go up. So a lot of people, here's a huge myth about mm -hmm. fasting. I'm going to go into this starvation mode if I don't eat every two to three hours or if I skip a meal. It's such a big lie that's been fed to us by General Mills sure. and these big food companies because yep. they don't want people of fasting, course, right? Of course. So what happens is the body is not stupid. It, it's, it's why you don't die in your sleep, by the way, because you fast during your sleep. Mm -hmm. So the body will raise these counter regulatory hormones and what it's doing, it's so freaking fascinating. Fasting is my favorite thing to talk about. Your body is literally pumping you full of energy because it thinks that there's a famish and it wants to go out there and hunt and kill your next meal. Mm. So the ultimate hack here for an entrepreneur is that you're gonna not use all of that energy to go hunt and kill your next meal because luckily for us, we could just go on our phone and if we need food, press Uber Eats and right. get somebody- uh, Which Brian and I just did before. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you have a millennial knocking on your door, right? <laughs> 30 minutes later. Yeah. It was a healthy meal though for what it, it's it worth, was. right? Yeah, yeah. 
So we're, we're blessed to not have that yep. problem that we have to go find food. Yep. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. So your body's going to give you all this energy, which mm. is the counter regulatory hormones, but instead of using it to hunt and kill, you're using it for a podcast interview, you're using it for a workout, you're mm -hmm. using it to crush your day, to crush right. a sales call. So it's one of the most important hacks for an entrepreneur to utilize that energy to crush the day. You ask me, how am I able to put out all this content? Yeah, I'm fasted, dude. Yeah, I'm fasted right now. I haven't ate today because wow. it's going to help me crush the day. Once I eat something, I'm just not as mentally sharp. My counter regulatory hormones are gone. And just to give a study here, mm -hmm. uh, a four day fast. So somebody who fasted for four days, mm -hmm. Their metabolism did not slow down. It actually increased by 13%. Wow. Okay, so let's significant. put significant. So yeah. let's put that myth to bed. And I want to ask you a question. Yeah, sure. Do you know the Guinness World Record for the longest recorded water fast? What do you think it is? Oh man. What do you think the Guinness water World fast? Record? So yeah. no food, no water? No food, no water. How long did it oh no, just water. Just water. Just water. Okay. How he long he did he this person go? Oh my god. What do you think, Brian? No water. No water. No. More than a lot more than that. I'll he had just water and a multivitamin. I'll say no I'll food. say a week. A week. Yeah. So this is going to be a great example yeah. because I actually wrote about it in my book. Three hundred and eighty-two days. Wow. Okay. This gentleman named Angus Burberry, who was a Scot Scottishman, he weighed four hundred and fifty pounds, and he went on a medically supervised water-only fast uh -huh. for three hundred and eighty-two days. That's crazy. I mean water fasting i mean we're taught obviously drink a ton of water right every single day so yeah. you know different different strategies for different people right yeah well he had water right he had, so he didn't fast against water right right but uh there is dry fasting which is no water that's crazy yeah that's a little extreme that's crazy so you do a 16 8 you're saying or do, or do you do a little bit myself beyond the, yeah what's your your fast i do window? i do like a 20 20 hour fast uh, uh -huh. four hour eating window Four hour eating window. Yeah, but but when I eat, I feast. So I follow that cycle. I'm freaking feasting. Like I'm gonna go to dinner later today and organic bites. I'm gonna freaking feast. Nice. Dude. So, that's good. so you're like black belt level fasting. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, yeah, I would say I've been doing it for six years. Yeah, yeah. amazing. But you you you're in there. There are th let's clarify a few things about intermittent fasting. I I wake up and I I drink black coffee. Yes. Right. That you that's even if you're drinking black coffee or water, you're still in a fasted state. Right. Well, that's a that's a it's. It depends. It depends. So the way to know for sure is to test your glucose. Okay. So if you want to be a geek like me, you would test your blood glucose before you have the coffee mm -hmm. and then 30 minutes after. And okay. if, if your glucose goes up by more than five points, then in, in my definition, it is breaking the fast. Okay. But, but for it, most people, black coffee, just straight up black coffee. It's very different for everybody. Oh, really? The okay. only way to know is to test. Interesting. Yeah. So for you, it could break it or not. And for me, it could be the opposite. Oh, but the only way to know is to test. If your glucose stays the same, mm -hmm. then you're good. But with that being said... I'm all for it, dude. If you want to be strict, then yeah, just water. But if you're going to have just coffee, it's going to help you. I call it a fasting crutch. I think it's perfectly fine. Awesome. Well, I think this is a good segue into morning routine. We just talked about waking up and drinking coffee and all this stuff. And and, and I've always admired your dedication to routine uh, morning and evening because I know just the, the way you operate. I, I knew for a fact that if I texted you after a certain time, whether it was eight o'clock or whatever, that you just wouldn't respond until the next morning because you literally shut your phone off. Yeah, you don't even look at it at a certain point in the evening because of the you know the light that comes in and things like that 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 affect your sleep. And I know you're super passionate about sleep, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But let's start the first part of the day. Let's start about morning and how you start your day. Arguably the most important. Thing. Breakfast is the most important day. Let's argue that the, your morning routine That's instead right. is the most important part of your day, right? So tell me about morning routine. How does Benazadi start his day? Take us through those first few hours. Yeah, the morning is so important yeah. to to control that environment. Yep. So for me, I wake up, I use the bathroom first and of foremost. Course. Yeah, sure. You got to take care of business. <laughs> got to take care of business, <laughs> and then I'll go back to the bed, yep. and then I'll have uh, I have a journal next to my my uh, my on the nightstand, mm -hmm. and I'll write down my gratitude. I'll no looking at the phone yet. Oh no, no no no! My phone's still on airplane mode. It's not even in the bedroom. It's in my office. Amazing. So I haven't looked at my phone for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't check my phone at least an hour after mm -hmm. I wake up. Okay. So I'm, I'm writing down my gratitude. I'll write down every morning what I'm grateful for, at least 10 things that I'll find. Mm -hmm. And then I'll write down my goals and I'll write them down as if they're already accomplished. So uh, I have done this, I have done that, I've helped this, this many people. Then I'll go and I'll grab my dog. You have your dog sleeping here. And I'll go for about a 20 minute walk with my dog. Yep. And I'll walk by, I live in Bay Harbor, I'll walk by Biscayne Bay. And I'll do some, Tony Robbins calls it priming, where you just get some air, you take some deep breaths. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that. Yep. Uh, while I'm walking there, I'm saying affirmations in my head. I'm saying uh, positive thoughts. I'm saying affirmations, things that are going to help with my goals and my future and my health. 
I get back home. Then I go into my office, still haven't checked my phone. I'll put on, I have this, uh, it's called a sauna space infrared light therapy. So I'll put the red light on me, which helps with cellular health. Mm. Then I do some Dr. Joe Dispenza meditation. Mm. I have it on my phone. So I'll grab the phone, but it's still on airplane mode. Sure. And I'll play the Joe Dispenza for about 15 minutes. And he really guides me through it. Right. Once I'm done with that, then I'll turn off the, turn on the phone, right. go to get into my routine. So it's so, about a 60 so, minute routine. You grab your phone, but the, 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 the connection's not on. So nobody could bother you with text messages, right. things, right? It's yeah. just, everything's purely purpose driven, right? Yeah. Like what you want to get out of exactly. it. Exactly. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so you start your, your routine that way. And what's interesting, and again, I'll, I'll be super honest right here on this, on this podcast. I wake up, the alarm goes off, grab my phone, you know, as most people do, unfortunately. Right. Yep. I, I take a look at the phone, like what notifications came in overnight. If I, is it, I guess like sometimes I'm like worried that there's an emergency that happened overnight. Usually yeah. You know, thank God nothing happens. So yeah. I look at the phone real quick. Okay, nothing I need to act on. And then I zombie down straight to the coffee machine. First thing I see is that coffee maker and I make myself a cup of coffee. And I know you don't necessarily think that that's the best route, right? Because I'm not getting the most bang for my buck out of that coffee. Talk a little bit about why you delay your coffee intake for, I think, what is it, 90 minutes? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. You're, you're right. Great question. I'm glad yep. you brought that up. Yep. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I love coffee. Yep. I'm a coffee snob, yep. but I wait an hour and a half. And the reason I do is because when we wake up in the morning, our cortisol, which is our stress hormone, gives mm -hmm. us energy. It's already activated. Mm. And cortisol is so much powerful than caffeine in that coffee or tea. So what happens if you have your coffee just first thing in the morning, that caffeine is going to be pretty much rendered useless. It's, you're not going to get the benefit from that. Because the cortisol is rising, right? Cortisol yeah. is going to overpower it. Right. Exactly. It's already it's already risen mm -hmm. and it's not going, the caffeine will not touch the dial on that cortisol. It's so just, it's almost like placebo at this point, drinking our coffee because it is. it's not really giving us any effect anymore. The, our natural body is what's waking us up. It is. And then what's going to happen is the cortisol will drop, the caffeine will lose its um, whatever kind of benefit you got from it, which uh -huh. is not much. And then you're going to want a second cup, a third cup, a fourth cup. But if you wait, here's the hack for every entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. If you have coffee, you wait an hour and a half to develop that discipline. Mm -hmm. Then you have your coffee. What happens is cortisol begins to drop down at this point. Mm. Then you have your coffee. What's going to happen? The caffeine will bind with that cortisol to help give you more energy, more bang for your buck. So you don't have to get a third, fourth, fifth cup and you have better energy levels for the rest of the day. Amazing. Amazing. I'm going to try. I'm going to try that tomorrow. Push, again. It, push it 30, then 45 yeah. and then work your way up. Yeah, man, dude, I'm a, just, I'm, I'm all about that coffee, man, every single morning. And then the first, the first thing my, my wife says to me in the morning is like, please make me a cup of coffee, <laughs> right? Cause the kids are going to wake up any moment. We need to be armed with that cup of coffee, yeah. but I'm going to, I'm going to challenge her. I'm gonna challenge myself. Let's delay it and let's see what happens. Right. Um, so now let's, we talk about morning. Let's talk about evening, right? You go about your day, take care of business, recording awesome content for keto camp. Uh, then you have your evening routine, right? And you, you wind down a certain way because again, you are super passionate about sleep and getting, you know, the best possible sleep that you can. So let's talk about how you ease into getting the best possible sleep ever. And that is centered around your evening routine, right? Yeah, absolutely. So a powerful morning starts the night before. Mm. So it's a perfect segue because like you mentioned, I, I have my phone, I put it on airplane mode. What time? Uh, it depends probably mm. like around eight 30 or eight 30. Okay, yeah, cool. Some, sometime around that eight 30 mm. or nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, um, I'll do some, some things to wind me down. So mm -hmm. I'll read or I'll watch, uh, I'll watch something. Sometimes I'll watch Netflix with my girlfriend, sure. but I'm watching it with these blue light blocking glasses that help produce uh, melatonin and less cortisol. And so, so it blocks all the blue light coming from our devices and yeah. screens and things like that, that could keep our mind awake. Exactly. Cause, cause that, 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 uh, whenever blue light enters your eyes or even touches your skin, you activate cortisol mm. and whenever cortisol is up, melatonin is down and you don't want that at night. You want the opposite. Gotcha. So I'll wear these at night and then uh, around nine 30, nine 45, I'll start reading and mm. then I'll go into my gratitude again and my goals. That's Amazing. usually my routine by 10, 15, 10, 30, uh, I'm in bed and going to sleep. And that's usually the flow of it. Okay, great. So now let's talk about sleep. We have another one of your books that you've written, The Power of Sleep, right? Yes. We'll leave a, a link in the description with where you can get this information. So talk about sleep and why you're so passionate about it and how many hours do we aim for? Because again, we see conflicting information all over the place. You see six, seven and a half, eight, nine, you right. see all these different things. What's your magic number? What do you strive for? And uh, let's talk about the power of sleep. Let's talk about its importance. Sleep is more important than diet and exercise combined. Really? So if, if I'm just crushing my, my diet, I'm in keto full on, I'm eating the healthiest thing uh, and I'm exercising, but if I'm not sleeping 
as much as I need to throw all that out the window. You won't get the results you want. Okay. Absolutely. Because you could go days without food. You mm -hmm. can go days without exercise, but you cannot go days without sleep or you'll turn into a crazy person, right? Sleep is crucial because your body is repairing itself from that workout. 95% mm -hmm. of fat burning takes place, by the way, during stage four sleep. Okay. That's when you activate your fat burning hormones. Your brain during stage four sleep literally shrinks in size. And then you have this fluid that fl flushes over it. And I talk about it in my book and it flushes out toxins. Wow. So it'll help with your thinking. It's just, it's so important to health. And, and to wow. answer your question, what's the answer? What's the... the the magic number. The magic number. Yep. Well, according to Matthew Walker, who's one of the leading authorities in sleep research, he says at least seven hours. Mm -hmm. At least seven hours should be the bare minimum of sleep each night okay. for somebody to function at an optimal level. So for me, I get about seven, seven and a half each night. Okay. Any tips for like, all right, you got to wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Um, and you, you see the clock. It's, you know, it's past the point where you're not going to get the seven hours or you're, you're reaching up to it, right? How do you get to sleep as fast as possible? How do you... How do you shut the mind, slow it down to get into real good quality sleep? Because I find that problem often sometimes, you know, I'm, well, probably checking my, my phone, I'm checking email, so I'm super active, right? I'm yeah. trying to work and hustle until the last minute, which is counterproductive, right? Um, but do you have any tricks for winding down and just being like, okay, I need to get to sleep in the next 30 minutes. I need to, I owe it to myself to get a good night's sleep. How do I, in the next 30 minutes, 40 minutes, knock myself out? Yeah, great question. You could make the bedroom really cold. Studies show 62 to 67 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit is the optimal temperature to right. get Absolutely. to bed. Yeah. Dark and cold. So you want to kind of turn your bedroom into like a sleep cave, like you're cool. going on a hibernation yeah, for three yeah, months yeah. type of thing. So make it as dark as possible. If you can have blackout curtains, just mm -hmm. eliminate any, any lights as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And then take a warm to hot shower about 45 minutes before. Okay. So what happens is when the body gets out of the shower, mm -hmm. it's in that shower, which was warm, now it's going to cool itself when you walk in that room. Right. That's also calming and relaxing. And then the final tip is something called banana tea. Uh, have banana you heard me talk tea. about banana tea before? Uh, a little bit. I'd love for you to expand on it. So banana tea is great. I call it nature's NyQuil. It I wrote a delicious banana tea. It, it actually tastes, it has a, light, a mild taste yeah, yeah, of banana. It's not so bad. I yeah. talk about it in my book. So I learned this from America's sleep doctor, Dr. Michael Bruce. So mm -hmm. credit goes to him. It, you just grab a whole banana and you leave the peel on. Okay. But you cut off the ends of that banana mm. and then you wash it. Make sure it's organic. That's important. So what you do is you put that banana with the peel on in a pot with water and let it boil for five minutes. Okay. The peel of a banana has more magnesium, potassium, more of these micronutrients mm. that help you relax than the actual banana itself. Gotcha. So as it boils, that seeps into the water. When it's done, you pour that into a cup, discard the banana or put it into the freezer, drink that, and it'll help calm the mind. It'll help relax you and help you get ready for bed. Amazing. Okay, good. Those are great tips. Those are great. And you can find all of that in the Power of Sleep booklet, yes, right? It's on Amazon, the book. Very, very cool. Okay, we'll link to that for sure. I want to talk about something else that you're passionate about, and that's mindset, right? Yes. Um, that could be a big topic. That could be a two hour podcast in its own, right? Mindset. Uh, but tell me a little bit about how you value mindset, the thoughts that you put into your head. I mean, I get inspired by some of the content you put out. Abundance is our birthright, right? Things like that. Um, the power of thought is real, you know, and whatever you think manifests itself. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, your beliefs around that and, and, and how, how much you value and safeguard your mindset. Yeah. It, thoughts are things. I mean, right. we, we were just talking about this studio a few weeks ago and all of a sudden it's, it's here. Yeah. So everything that is in this world, the iPad, the speakers, the cameras, it all started here before it actually existed. So Bob Proctor says it best. Thoughts are things. If you could hold it in your mind, you could see it in your hands. So mm -hmm. everything that we think will manifest one shape or, or another. So we got to really be diligent with our thoughts, which is our greatest power, the power to choose. And for me, coming from a place where I was mentally obese, mentally bankrupt, having the most hateful thoughts of resentment and hating myself mm -hmm. to the thoughts I have now, if I could do that, anybody can do that because everything I just shared about getting to bed, doing that, putting your temperature at this time, uh, doing keto fasting, all that's great. But if you don't have the right mindset, it's not going to work. If you have hate and resentment, yep. it's not going to work because you cannot heal a body that you hate. Mm. So you got to start with love. And I mean, self-love as, as woo woo as that sounds for yeah. people, I'm telling you love and gratitude are two of the biggest healers in this world. So thought is your, your thoughts are so important. The average person thinks about 60,000 thoughts per day mm -hmm. and over 90% of them are the same thoughts from the day before, which were negative thoughts. Crazy. So we need to guard our mind. Like when we watch the news, when we watch the media, 
we're getting all this negative news. CNN stands for constantly negative news. Yep. And this is going into our mind. So we got to really do a good job of combating that. Yep. So we have to safeguard our thoughts because nothing on the outside will ever help us will mm -hmm. or hurt us. It's what's on the inside that counts. For sure. For and, sure. and you had a quote and I'd love for you to share it. Now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, my cousin Megan, uh, she has a, a great company called Vibrant Fit and she puts out a lot of inspiring content on Instagram. I'll, I'll, I'll drop in the description uh, where you could follow her and find her company. But she shared this quote the other day that really resonated with me. Uh, she wrote, imagine your mind like a garden and your thoughts are the seeds. You get to choose what seeds you plant in it. You could plant seeds of positivity, love, and abundance, or you could plant seeds of negativity, fear, and lack. You could also spend time trying to take care of everyone else's garden. That resonated deeply with me. Or you can work on making yours beautiful and attract other beautiful people to your garden. And I mean, that that hit me deep because um, oftentimes, I think a lot of us, we don't safeguard our thoughts as well as we can. We think of our mind as like, here's here's what I think about it, and I think about it just because I, I need to think about it, mm -hmm. right? But you really get to choose your thoughts. Um, you know, I read a book uh, by Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, which a lot of people have read, very, very popular book. And and kind of the, the overarching thesis of that book is you need to be an observer of the mind, right? Just because you automatically think something doesn't mean you believe in it or it's true. You can observe the thought and say, I choose not to think about that or, you know, you look down at the thought and, and move it off to the side. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, that resonated deeply with me. If you, if you, if you have any thoughts on that, you know, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. It's a beautiful quote. I, I love that too. I have never heard that one before and it's so true. And, and we observe our thoughts. And I learned sure. that from, from Wayne Dyer, Wayne mm. Dyer, sh he shared about, and this is what, what happens with me because I still have these thoughts that are self-limiting. Sure. And we all do. It just pops into our head. Sometimes self-doubt exactly. and things like that. Worry, anxiety, um, and I feel like that anxiety is, is der der derived from these bad thoughts that yes. just linger. You yes. have a thought that you just let, you know, fester for 30 minutes and that is anxiety, right? Yes. It's, it's our paradigm, right? right. It's, it's, it's a learned behavior. Yep. And I've, I, I know that it has nothing to do with our potential or mm -hmm. even who we are at this moment. And it has everything to do with our conditioning, mm -hmm. our behavior, the way we were grown up, the experiences we had. So for me, whenever I have these thoughts that are negative, I've come, I've gotten really better at observing them, like you mentioned, yep. and I look at them as kind of clouds that go by and I just let it pass. And then I, uh, I see a positive and I choose that one. Choose it. Yep. So I choose the powerful thought, uh, the positive thought, right. because nothing is good. Nothing is bad, but thinking makes it so sure. uh, Shakespeare sh uh, shared that. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says something negative about me, cause mm -hmm. I'm on social media and there's going, as you get bigger, you're going to get haters. It's just the nature of the game. Sure. When they say a comment, their comment has nothing to do with me. No. And it, ha it doesn't matter what they say. What only, the only thing that matters is what I think as a result of what mm, they say. Yeah. So if you're very convicted with who you are, how you're helping people and your message, then those comments will deflect off of you like water off of a fish. Mm -hmm. It's like you coming up to me and saying, Ben, your hair is blue and it looks ridiculous. <laughs> I know my hair is not right. blue. I'm just going to be like, okay, well, thanks, dude. Right, exactly. So you have to have the conviction, but it starts with your self-awareness. And books have helped me develop that having relationships with people that are like-minded like you, uh, your environment is so important. So I definitely would examine your environment because environment is more important than heredity. Examine your environment. If you're hanging around people who are negative, who are mm -hmm. complaining, mm -hmm. you're also going to do the same. Sure. So you're the average of the five people you hang exactly. out with the most, right? It, proximity is power or mm -hmm. proximity could destroy you. So exactly. So I would, I would definitely start there. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Ben, thank you so much for spending the time on the show. We talked about a lot of awesome stuff. We covered everything. Keto to intermittent fasting to mindset and routine. Uh, where can people find you? Just, you know, quick plugs on, on your YouTube and your Instagram and Keto Camp. But where could they find you? Yeah. So uh, thank you first and foremost. Well, sure. I had a great time chatting with you, brother. Mm -hmm. I love what you're doing and uh, congrats to you. And, and leave Will a rating and review on this podcast. It Thanks, helps man. out big time. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so you could find me on YouTube. If you put in Keto Camp, uh, mm -hmm. that's Camp with the K, yep. you'll see my channel. Definitely subscribe. I have the Keto Camp podcast. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in getting more of this type of uh, coaching from me, I have an online platform called the Keto Camp Academy which is a hundred plus videos. We talk a lot about mindset, self-development. So if you go to ketocampacademy.com, you can learn more about that. And lastly, Instagram is at the Ben Azadi. And uh, that's where you could find me. Awesome. Awesome. Ben, thank you so much for joining the show, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, Will. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to Lessons Via Leaders. Really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please smash that like button below. That goes a long way. It shows us that we're doing a good job and that you like the content you just saw. 
Also, please be sure to subscribe. We'll be releasing a new one-on-one -on -one interview with a different entrepreneur each week. So if you're subscribed, that'll make sure you don't miss a thing. Also, please be sure to drop a comment below. Let us know what you thought of this episode and what resonated most with you. We'd love to start a conversation. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get feedback and uh, we'd really appreciate it. I know Ace would appreciate it as well, right, buddy? <laughs> Thanks so much, guys.